This episode is sponsored by Plex. Last year, I partnered up with Plex to produce a series of videos about setting up a new Plex server on a NAS and where to find their newest settings and features. But we did not delve into many of the customizations that you can do. Now we can use AI to quickly and efficiently generate posters where none exist to make your library look much cleaner. And we can edit text metadata for our files and create a better looking custom experience. The tips I'm gonna give you here will not only save you a ton of time, but it will also make your Plex server look and feel exactly the way you want it to. So let's go ahead and start with the newest way you can customize your Plex experience, using AI to generate data and posters. Now, normally Plex will automatically add posters to files that match metadata. Given that Plex does this automatically whenever you sync your library and new uploads, this saves countless hours of time editing your metadata yourself. But in my case, I have a huge library of home movies and none of them have posters. So I can use an AI service to generate those posters. Now, if these movies actually had real movie posters to upload, then obviously I would choose to go that route instead. But since these are personal files for my own use, I never created any kind of fancy posters for them. That would have taken me days to create before we had access to AI services. In my case, I am using chat GPT's new image generation tool to create some simple posters, but there are plenty of services like this one online that offer this as well. So I'm going to go to the OpenAI website or the app and give it a description of a photo. So in my case, I am using videos of me and my sister going to a beach in Hawaii with her dog. Her dog is so cute, his name is Thumper. So the description I feed to chat GPT is create a movie poster that is 2592 by 3840 pixels. The scenery is Lanakai Beach in Hawaii. The image should include a small long haired dachshund dog with brown hair swimming in the blue water, make the sky partly cloudy. Now, since humans often look horrifying via AI, I am choosing to not include any people in the posters that I create. The text that I have given the bot is not very descriptive, but I'm also not going to spend a lot of time here. You can be as descriptive as you want in generating those posters if you prefer something that's very specific. So the images it gave me are all obviously AI, but they will be much cuter to look at and easier to browse than a somewhat blurry thumbnail that was taken on my GoPro from the video itself. So which one of these pictures do you prefer? I have three different options on here from the chat bot. Uh, I think I like this one. So the photo is saved as a WebP file, which is fine. I do have a small pro tip here. You may want to keep those posters organized into folders if you ever want to re-upload them to other files or reuse them on playlists or collections. Now, in order to add them to your collection, your playlist, or just the video file itself, just hit the edit button and find the section labeled poster. So click choose an image, enter a URL, or drag and drop and insert your new poster. Then click Save Changes and you should be good to go. You can also add a background image too using the same technique. So in the case of my Hawaii video, I can generate a background image in ChatGPT again using a similar description, but for a different resolution. Now let's move on to customizing metadata. So this is the information about a video file or a series of videos that includes the title, the summary, taglines, original air date or release date, the ratings and more. Luckily, Plex automatically does a bunch of this work for you, just like with the posters. Whenever you upload a video file to Plex, it will search the web for matching metadata and include that information on your listing. But sometimes you may want to add your own description or review to a file instead of the generic information, or you might want to change the rating to your own custom rating or change the title. I can use Google's new Gemini AI to write me a solid summary and a tagline for some media. Now to change the metadata for each file, you can click on the pencil icon, then go through each page of data to change the information listed. Since most of my home movies are simple recordings, I would rather just put them into a playlist or a collection, then edit the metadata for those groups of videos. So here's how I would do that. First, I select which files I want to add to a collection or a playlist by selecting the first file, holding down shift and selecting the last one in the list. 
If you have multiple folders where your data lives, you can also select files in one folder, go to another folder and select even more. And I love that little hack. Click the add to icon and then you can add your files to a collection or a playlist. Now I do have a few important notes to make here. Collections are server wide and they can include all sorts of file types, not just videos. You would have to create different collections per library, like one in movies and then one in TV shows and give both of those collections the exact same name and the collections will show up within each other. This is also where you can collect all similar data into one pile, but that collection does not have an order to it other than the current specified order. Collections can only be created by the server of owner, not users, but a playlist can be created by anyone who has access to your server. In a user created playlist, the order can be specified and these are also used for single types of content. So you can put your files into both or you could just put them in playlists or just in collections. It totally just depends on what you are doing with that data. Now, if you are creating new playlists or collections, refresh your page and you will see these newly made lists available via the sidebar menu, as well as your menu at the very top of the page. Once created, you can go edit your playlists and collections as well to add posters and backgrounds or edit the metadata. So here I have created another separate custom poster just for the collections and playlists that show me a really quick visual reminder of what each media group is related to. Now check out this before and after of all my home videos. They're finally sorted. I can make sense of it all. It looks so good. Originally, I did have everything filed and organized into folders, which is totally fine for a file directory on a Windows PC, for example. But when moving this data over to a Plex server on a NAS, it makes a lot more sense to organize this data into much more visual and easy to identify playlists or collections. That way, whether I'm wanting to stream these videos on my phone or watch them on my TV or watch them on my laptop, no matter which place, I can easily discover the content and get to it rather than going through multiple multiple subfolders. If you have questions about how to do any of these customizations, or if you need some ideas in terms of what kind of prompts you can give to AI in order to develop your own posters for your home movies, leave your comments down below. I would love to help out. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye y'all.